making up for lost time recently and traveling all to all the cities that he, had, he has wanted to visit for many years. Richard will present speech number eight from the Competent Communicator Manual. Visual aids. His speech will be 13 to 16 minutes and will take us to Moscow. It was more than a vacation. It was actually a pilgrimage to Moscow. Richard Cummings. Please come on up. Fellow Toastmasters, friends, guests. As the plane touched down at Moscow's Sheremetyevo Airport, I was feeling too powerful, but opposite emotions. On the one hand, I was about to set foot on the soil of my paternal ancestors who for probably thousands of years were peasants in the Russian lands. I was feeling my Russian roots. On the other hand, as a child, I was taught to hate and fear the Soviet Union. Those godless communists, they were about to unleash a nuclear attack on New York at any moment. This reverie was interrupted suddenly as the plane reached the gate to armed gunmen burst into the plane. Well, at least I, I thought they had guns. They were covered from head to toe with protective clothing. As we wondered what this was about, the captain finally announced that these were inspectors from the Moscow Health Department. Sit down, put your stuff back. They are going to inspect for swine flu. <laughs> The guns turned out to be very sophisticated devices that if you just point at your head, takes your temperature. This was a heart-thumping start to my pilgrimage. <laughs> Why a pilgrimage and not a vacation? You see, 35 years ago, I discovered the voice of Pavel Lysitsia, an Armenian who was the lead baritone of the Bolshoi opera for almost 40 years. When he retired in 1967, he began to give a series of concerts and taught young singers all over the world until his 90th year. An incredible voice, powerful. His artistry was unique. Thought he was almost as good as Elvis. <laughs> when Pavel died in 2004, at the age of 93, I discovered that he had a son one of his sons was living in New York. Gerasim, or Garrick for short, and I soon became good friends. For years, Garrick and I have talked about making a trip to his native city to see the rest of his family. He has two sisters and a brother, all famous singers, and we could visit the places where Pavel had been such a star. And now it was a reality. But I have to tell you that Moscow's airport is far from modern. In fact, the whole city has a rather drab look. It's very clean, but there's nothing like the old quarters of other European cities or the gleaming architecture of places like Shanghai. We arrived at Garrick's sister Karina's beautiful apartment right off the main street, that's Tverskaya Ulitsa, and we settled in to get over the jet lag. The next day, we headed for Moscow's two main attractions. This is Red Square, one of the most famous squares in the world. At the far end, you see a, there's a historical museum in rather old style. On the right is Gum, which is the state store. All of the world's top fashions are in there. If you're going to shop in there, bring plenty of money. Where I'm taking the picture from is probably one of the most famous sites in the world. This is St. Basil's Cathedral. 
A picture doesn't do it justice. It is really a magnificent sight. And you'll notice on the left, I, I thought my eyes were playing tricks. In Moscow, they do not want you to see construction. So that's what the building will look like. It's a very fancy backdrop. And especially they don't want to ruin the view in Red Square. This is a close-up of the spires. It is an awe-inspiring sight. In Russian Orthodox churches, there is never, after my own heart, there's never a blank space on the wall. <laughs> Everything is painted or covered. Icons all the way up to the ceiling. Almost every single church is like that. And this is Lenin's tomb. Now, Lenin is supposed to be buried in there, but I have to tell you a secret. He's not really there. Because there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Lenin and Stalin walk around Red Square all day, and you can talk to them, have your pictures taken. <laughs> you know, these two gentlemen were not the most friendly types. In fact, most people call them butchers, but the Russians seem to rather like that they walk around. It's kind of fun. This is the Church of Our Savior, and you'll notice Russian architecture all through the city, the beautiful domes. This is probably the largest church in, in Moscow, and it's right near the Kremlin. The Kremlin has four gates. You see on the left is one of the gates with a star on top. Unfortunately, you can't take pictures in that building, the armory, but it has some of the greatest treasures in the world. Fabergé eggs, 30 of Catherine the Great's 300 carriages, jewelry, Boris Budinov's carnation robes and scepter, stuff from Ivan the Terrible. It is an amazing collection. This is the Church of the Annunciation inside the Kremlin. And that was our guide. We had a guided tour of the Kremlin in English. That is called the Tsar's Cannon. It is the largest cannon in the world. You would not want to be on the receiving end of that. And this is also the largest bell in the world. You can see it cracked at one point a few centuries back. A massive collection. This is Moscow's City Hall. Okay, it's, it's a nice building, but nothing spectacular. And here's a street in downtown Moscow. Again, a little boring, but very clean, but death-defying to cross the street. You do not want to cross a street in Moscow except at a light that you know is working or an underpass, because they drive at, well, you know how fast they drive, 90 miles an hour would be Stretching the point. Here's one of the few modern buildings in, in Moscow. It's called the House of Music. But to me, it looks like the most expensive and largest hubcap in the world. <laughs> we, we attend a concert there. Perhaps the most famous or infamous building in the entire city is this one. But it looks very nice. It looks like it might even be a hotel. But just the name of this building inspired fear for years. This is the Lubyanka, Stalin's prison. Once inside that building, you never came.